All right, so let's do what we always do. Let's greet each other properly. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we're in lesson five in integration topic. We're going to be talking about an area of physics dealing with what's called position functions um, and the related functions called the velocity and acceleration function. So what I need to do first is uh, go over the different uh, definitions of what we're going to be talking about. We're going to call S of T, where T stands for time, our position function. So S of T is going to be just some kind of function. It could be polynomial or trig. It could be any basic function, but it's going to be, our, be representative of our, what's called our position function. Now, what that tells us is, uh, is where the particle or object, whatever we're talking about in the problem, is located any time T. So the position function is one which tells us our position at any time T. Do you have a lesson? So it uh, tells us where uh, the object or particle or whatever we're talking about in the physics problem is located, where the object is located okay, at any time, at any time, and our variable for time is t. Okay? So you're going to be given that function typically in the, in the problem. If not, you're going to be given either one of the other two functions called the velocity and the acceleration functions. And you need to know how, what to do with those other functions to get your position function and so on. Now, S prime is the derivative of S, right? Yeah. When you do, uh, differentiate your position function, you get what's called the velocity function. Okay, so I'm going to call this V of T. V for what? Okay, so it's our velocity function. It tells you how fast the particle's moving at any time. So it's, we call that the velocity uh, function. You can, uh, when, you see, when you hear the word velocity, think speed, okay? It's related to speed, and it tells you how fast the object is, is uh, changing. How fast is the object moving or changing over time? So how fast? You know, how many meters per second, how many feet per second, you know, over time, all right? How fast the object uh, is moving. Okay, so you differentiate S to get V. Okay, and it's a good thing you know all your derivatives. Okay, that's why you've been learning all this, so you can solve all kinds of cool problems related in physics. Okay. Um, and then you differentiate your velocity function. You get S double prime, the second derivative, right? And when you differentiate V, you get V prime. Okay, so S double prime is actually V prime. Who sees that? Okay, so you differentiate S uh, or V prime, the velocity function, you get what's called uh, V prime, but it actually represents your acceleration function, which is A of T. So we call that A of T, A for acceleration. Yeah. Okay, now, what does that mean? Well, it's how fast the velocity is changing over time. Okay, so how fast... the velocity is changing. Because if you're accelerating, your velocity is changing, isn't it? I mean, think about, about it when you're in a car um, and you step on the gas, you know, you're getting faster and faster and faster. The velocity is changing depending on the level of gas you give the car. So how fast the velocity is changing uh, over time. And typically that's like if your units are in feet and your time is in seconds, Okay, that's going to be velocity per second per second. So velocity, when his velocity is changing and it's changing over time, uh, that'd be feet per second. But if it's changing over time, it'd be feet per second per second. Now, if you go feet per second per second, you get feet per second squared. So it's a little bit different. So the units of uh, time for acceleration is like, say, for example, feet per second squared. It's a little bit different than velocity. Velocity is like feet per second. Feet. Uh, per second if the units of measurement are in feet and time is in seconds. It all depends on the problem, of course, but uh, acceleration is feet per second per second, how fast it's changing over time. And then speed we define as the absolute value of the velocity. So if you know uh, what the velocity is, whether it's negative or positive, and <laughs> believe it or not, it can be negative or positive, that indicates direction, either up or down, left or right, depending on the problem. Um, the way you get speed is by taking the absolute value of your velocity. And that's going to be something simple to do. Oops, absolute value. Okay, 
Now let's interpret a couple things. When, when you're given actual functions and you work on the velocity here, and again, we're going to be working with particles in motion. Uh, either you consider it as a particle or an object or, you know, whatever is happening in the problem. If you get something like v of t equals zero, that means velocity is zero. That means that the object is what? Moving or not moving? Okay, so this means not moving. Okay, so not moving. In other words, you can say stopped. Okay, or just stopped. So if the velocity is zero, it's not moving, it's stopped, stationary. Okay, now v of t is less than zero, it's negative, right? So that means, this is a fancy way of saying it's negative, but we have two types of motion in our problems that we're going to be working with. If it's vertical motion, we're going we're gonna to refer to upwards as positive and downwards as negative. Okay, and in respect to horizontal motion, we're going to represent to the right as positive and to the left as negative. Okay, so if, it's, if the velocity is negative, it's going to be either left or down, okay, left or down. So left is either going to be moving left or down, okay, and if v of t, the velocity function is positive, okay, what is that going to mean? The particle is moving which way? Yeah. yeah, right or up, up or right, however you want to say it, right or up. Yeah, you just it's, it, you have to determine that in the context of the problem. So you just got to read that as you go. Okay, so with those def, you know definitions, let's go through some basic problems and try to get used to how you work with all these functions and use your knowledge of derivatives and integration, all right, to to solve all these different types of physics problems. So here we go. We got s of t. What is, what kind of function function is that? Yeah. Position function. Okay, so we got a position function here. That's a polynomial function, and like I said, it could be anything. It could be polynomial, rational, uh, trigonometric, I mean, it could be anything. Okay, so you've got a polynomial function representing our position function in feet. The units of measurement are feet. Time is in seconds, so velocity is going to be feet per second, and acceleration is going to be feet per second squared in this problem. So it says find the velocity and acceleration at times uh, one second, two seconds, and four seconds, and then find their speed. So we've got some work to do. Okay, so what do we do to the position function s, s of t, to get to the velocity function? Differentiate. Differentiate. So s prime here, s prime of t equals v of t, okay, and that's going to be equal to 3t squared minus 6t. Okay, just use your power rule and you get your velocity function right here. And what you want to do is find out how fast this particle is moving at the times, at 1 second, 2 seconds, and 4 seconds. So what you have to do is evaluate the velocity function at 1, 2, and a 4 and get your velocities. So it's pretty straightforward, actually. So let's do that right now. So v of 1, you get in work ahead of me there. That's going to be, it looks like that's going to be 3 minus 6, right? So 3 minus 6, what's that? Negative 3. Ooh, it's negative 3, and that's b per second. So what does that tell us? It, let's suppose this is horizontal uh, uh, motion. Let's write that down, horizontal motion. Let's say it's a horizontal motion problem. Is that going to be moving left or moving right? Left. Very good. Okay, it's moving left. So I'm going to put just uh, left down there just to remind you. So it's moving left and then it's going to be feet per second. Okay, V of 2. Okay, and then we want to evaluate V of 4. Okay, go ahead and work on those. Here. Okay, so V of that'd be uh, 2 cubed minus, excuse me, I didn't read that correctly. Let me change that. Uh, I'm going to look at the velocity function. So 3 times 2 squared uh, minus 6 times 2. What did you guys get? Zero. Oh, zero? What does that mean? Stop. Okay, let's write that down. So stopped. <coughs> stopped at what time? After two seconds, the particle stops. So you've got to visualize this. Look at me. You're, uh, pretend uh, this is like you're at that, uh, what do you call it, the carnival, and you've you got the, the toy guns there with the lights shooting out of them, and this, this duck is going left and right, and every time you shoot it, it's, it's moving in a different direction, in the opposite direction. So let's say the duck starts moving. He's moving to the left because between one and two seconds, well, at one second he's moving left, right? He's moving left at uh, negative three feet per second, so he's moving left. Then you hit him, boom. He instantaneously stops at one second, or excuse me, at two seconds. He, at t equals two, he stops, and then boom, something happens. He probably changes direction. 
So this thing's moving left and right. And at four seconds, what'd you get for V of four? 24. 24, which way is he moving? Right. Okay, so 24 feet per second, and I'm uh, moving right. So you gotta visualize, you know, this guy, or this object, or whatever it is, is moving left and right at different times. Okay, now, from those values, we can get speeds. Okay, look at the definition of speed up top above your notes there. How did I define it? Okay, so at t equals 1, at t equals 1, the, the speed, um, what's the speed? Yeah, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So you take the absolute value of negative 3, you get 3, so 3. All right, at t equals 2, what's the speed? Let's call them out, guys. At zero, yeah, absolute value of zero is zero. And this is not too hard. Then t equals four, the speed is? Okay, 24, absolute value of 24 is just 24. <coughs> okay, so the negative and positive signs indicate direction. Who's figured that out? Okay, and then the, uh, the magnitude of it, which is the absolute value, it just tells you how fast the object is moving, okay? All right, now let's find the acceleration function because we have to do that as well. So to get from velocity function to acceleration function, we differentiate. So V prime is equal to A of T, the acceleration function. So I is, uh, let's say right here, there's your V of T. We've got to differentiate that to get to the acceleration function. Okay, we call that V prime or A of T. And what'd you guys get? 6 T minus 6. So 6 T minus 6. And then what they want you to do is evaluate that function at 1, 2, and 4 and get the acceleration at those times. So when, when t is 1, you get a of 1, which is 6 times 1 minus 6. Okay, and acceleration is 0. What does that mean? If you have 0 acceleration at t equals 1, then what's, ha what's let's say, what's constant? Speed. Yeah, the speed or the velocity, right? Because it's like being in a car and you're constantly at 6, 60 miles an hour on the freeway or something like that. Okay, you're not stepping on the gas and you're not braking. You're just constantly moving. So if you have zero acceleration, you're not getting any faster and you're not getting any So are we, are we good on that? Okay. And then at A of 2, uh, let me see, 6 times 2 minus 6 is a total of 6. Now this is feet per second squared. Okay. Feet per second per second, which is feet per second squared. Now it's positive. So what's happening? Yeah, it's getting 6 feet per second. The velocity is changing at 6 feet per second per second. It's getting faster and faster and faster. Every second, increase, the velocity increases 6 feet per second. And then at A of 4, uh, what'd you guys get? 18. So it's getting faster and faster there, feet per second per second, feet, feet per second squared. All right, so pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward so far. All right, that's the basic type. Um, forget this question here. Okay, let's go to number three, or part C. Find the intervals. And the words moving left and right. Okay, now when it says when the object moves, we're talking about velocity. So let's do a little sign analysis on velocity. Okay, here we go. So, let me see it. Zero, and let's see, let me see, where is it stopped, or when, at what time is it stopped? Two. two. So at two, it stopped right here. Uh, let me bring this down a little bit. There we go. So it stopped right here at 2. Okay, and at 0. And then at 4, uh, as, well, let's, let's just see what's going on. Between 0 and 2, let's pick a value, like 1, right? That's good. So between at t equals 1 right here, we already evaluated. Look up at the top of the data. What's the V of 1? It's negative 3, right? It's negative. And what did that mean? It's moving left. So let's just put a negative sign there. It's moving left. Okay. And now after 2, uh, it could be like 4. We already evaluated V of 4. We found it to be v, uh, 24, right? And that's positive. So that means it's moving right. So if this is a horizontal motion problem there, um, oh, by the way, what, what's happening at time equals 0? If you substitute, what's V of 0? 0. What does that mean? So it stopped here. Okay, so it stopped at t equals 0 and t equals 2. So between 0 and 2, between those two times, it's moving left. And then exactly at t equals 2, instantaneously it changes direction.
So it's going left, boom, at equal to it stops instantaneously, switches to the right, and moves to the right. So this thing's constantly going left and right, depending on what's going on. Actually, it's going to be going right to infinity because it's a cubic function, okay? Does that make sense so far? So from 0 to 2, it's moving left. You know, the open interval, right? Not at 2 because 2 it stopped. And then from 2 to infinity, it's moving to the right. Who's with me so far on that? Okay? And that's the interpretation of the problem if it's horizontal motion. Uh, well, yeah, I guess you could do it before 0. Uh, but this is time. So you typically we t start time at... Uh, we don't consider time negative. I mean, you can. In certain problems, we do. You're going to find that out. But in this problem, uh, we'll consider time to be positive. Okay, next one. Now I'm stepping up a little bit and showing you how to work with a different function. Okay, so what you want to realize is this. When, just look up here on the left here. I'm going to just kind of diagram something here. S of t is your position function. You differentiate it, that's d dt, not d dx because the variable's not x, it's in respect to t now. You differentiate, what do you get? S prime. Oh, well, what is S prime? Oh, v of t. It's a velocity function, right? So you get v of t. Draw this little diagram with me here. So you start off with the position function S of t. You differentiate it, that's d dt, derivative in respect to t. You get velocity function. You differentiate it again. Take another derivative in respect to time. What do you get? Acceleration. Acceleration. We call that A of t. This is the concept diagram. So from position function to <coughs> velocity function, you differentiate. You differentiate again to get the acceleration function. Now, what do you do to get back? From, what do you do from the acceleration function to get back to the, the uh, velocity function? Integrate. Integrate. So here... To get back right here, you integrate. To get from velocity to position, you integrate again. Because the integration uh, operation is the inverse function of the derivative. So you differentiate one way to get one function. To get back to the previous function, you integrate. Who's with me on that idea? Didn't we do that in differential equations? When we had f prime equal to some function here, to find f, didn't we integrate? You integrate f prime to get f. We integrate v to get s. Or in, we, in other words, we integrate uh, s prime to get s. Okay? Okay, so here we go. We're given the velocity function this time. Ooh, look at that. Okay? We want to find... Oh, and then look at this right here. The, when s is equal to 0 and t equals 1, guess what that represents? Initial condition. Initial condition. Okay? It's an initial condition. Okay, so s equals 0. That means the position is 0 at t equals 1. And it says find the position, velocity, and speed, and acceleration at time equals 2. So there's a lot of work to be done. So write small because we're going to use this entire area here. Okay, so what we could do first is we can find our position function, s of t. I'm going to do that by integrating our velocity function. So here we go. We're going to get s of t is equal to the integral of v of t dt. We're going to integrate. Okay, so what are we integrating? Well, we're integrating uh, cosine of pi halves t. dt, okay? Okay, so who's already thinking new substitution here? Because our, our angle is not just t, is it? It's pi halves t. And any time when the angle is anything other than t or anything other than the typical variable, it's a simple u substitution. So we're going to let u equal pi halves t. So let's do that off to the side. And we're going to find du. Help me out a little bit. du is equal to? Very good. Pi halves dt. Okay, not, not dx, but dt now because our variable is in respect to t. Now, there's no pi halves in the integral. You guys see that? So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal and write it uh, as 2 over pi du equals dt. So 2 divided by pi du equals dt. All this gets substituted right in there. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me on that so far. Okay, straight substitution. And now, let's rewrite the integral in terms of u. 
Who's, who's developing the habit of just bringing out the constant in front of the integral every single time? Okay, that's most of you. That's good. So I'm going to write it as 2 divided by pi times the integral of uh, cosine u du. All right, here we go. The integral of cosine is a function whose derivative is cosine? Sine, right? So here we go. So 2 divided by pi times the sine of u. But let's, let's put in x, or not x, but t immediately. Um, so that's going to be a pi halves t plus c, plus a constant. This is your position function right here. That's a major result, OK? Okay, now you can't evaluate that function at t equals 2 yet because you have no idea what the constant is yet. And when we talked about differential equations and we solve, what do, uh, we solve them, how do we find the constants? What do we use to find the constants of integration? Okay, the initial condition, and that's up here in blue at the very top. So here we go. What are we going to what's, what's s of t equal to? Zero. When t equals 1. So that's going to be equal to 2 divided by pi. Uh, sine of pi halves times 1 plus c. Okay, let's step it out together. What's sine of pi halves? 1 times 2 divided by pi is just 2 divided by pi. So you get 0 equals just 2 divided by pi plus c. So c is equal to negative 2 over pi. c equals negative 2 divided by pi, and that goes right up here. You okay? All right. So we have um, our position function up here and now at the very top. S of t now equals uh, 2 divided by pi times the sine of pi halves t uh, minus 2 over pi. There we go. That's a major result right there, because that's going to help us evaluate and find our position at time equal to 2, because we want to evaluate all functions, the velocity, the position, and the acceleration functions at t equals 2. <coughs> so we've got the position function now. They gave us the velocity function. Now we need the acceleration function. And once we have all three functions, then we evaluate all three at t equals 2, and we get our results. Are we good? OK. So now the question is, how do you get um, from the velocity function that's given up there, v of t, to a of t. What do we do with that velocity function? Yeah, look on the left side there. From v of t to a of t, we, we differentiate. So here we go. So d dt of, uh, of v, you could write it th like this, I guess. Or actually, you know, you just go v prime. Yeah, that's the easiest way to say it. Let's just call it v prime, okay, which is equal to a prime. Wait a minute, wait a minute, excuse me. What am I doing here? I just messed up. What am I doing? I found S of T. Uh, taking derivative. Yeah, acceleration. Here we go. What am I doing? Okay, so acceleration function. So what is that? Well, we've got to use a chain rule. What's the derivative of the cosine? So we've got to have negative sine of pi half T times the derivative of the inside function, pi halves. OK, now hopefully you guys are going to have it of bring that in front. So let's just rewrite it. So our a of t is equal to negative pi halves sine of pi halves t. And that's a major result there. So let's highlight that. There we go. OK, so now we've got to evaluate all three functions at t equals 2, and then we're done. OK, so here we go. Um, Okay, so at, uh, at t equals 2, um, we'll start off with the s of, we'll find s of 2. So we've got to substitute that in. You've got to substitute 2 into your position function. That's the one in yellow right here. So we got 2 divided by pi times the sine of pi halves times 2 uh, minus uh, 2 divided by pi. This actually is easier than you think. The, the twos cancel here. What's sine of pi? Zero. So that's a big zero. What's zero times anything? 
Zero. So what's our answer for S of 2? Negative 2 divided by pi. Okay. What are the units of position? Oh, you know, it doesn't tell us in the problem. Okay, let's, <laughs> if there are no units, we'll just leave it unitless, okay? But if it was in terms, if velocity was feet per second, what would position be? Feet, okay. So S of 2 is uh, found, let's find V of 2. So V of 2 is cosine of pi halves times 2. This is an easy one. What's that? Negative 1. Negative one very good. Okay, so that's negative 1 feet per second if it was in the, those units there. And A of 2, last one. Yeah. Oh, you're already working ahead of me. Very good. Okay, so negative pi halves times sine of pi halves times 2. All right. And since the 2's kind of slot, you got to take the sine of pi, which is just 0. So that's 0. 0 times anything is 0, which means it's not accelerating at that time. The velocity is constant at t equals 2. I'm going to pause here. All right, so let s of t equal to negative 1 half g t squared. Guess what g stands for? Gravity. Yeah, it's, oh, did I say that in there? Let's see, describe the height. G is the constant of gravity. Does anybody know what it is? Oh, you've been in physics before then. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared if you're a metric system. And what is it in the standard system? 30, yeah, it's 32 feet per second squared. So let's write that down. G is the acceleration of gravity. You'll, you'll get all this stuff in physics, okay? Acceleration of gravity, G for gravity. And in, um, in standard system, if you're in feet and seconds, uh, it's 32 feet per second squared. Or in metric system, the equivalent number is 9.8 meters per second squared. And so you have to determine whether you're in feet or in meters in the problem, so you use one accordingly. In this problem, we're, we're dealing with feet, because look right here. Um, h of 0 represents the height above the ground. You have to clue in on all these variables right here. h of 0 is the height above the ground, or initial height. Uh, v of 0 is initial velocity, right there. The subscript 0, did everybody see that? V0 or V sub 0, or if you're in physics, sometimes they call it V naught. V sub 0 is the initial velocity because when you start, you know, dealing with the situation at t equals 0, you start counting at 0. You know, when you hit the stopwatch, you start at 0. So V0 is initial velocity, H0 is initial height, and so on. And then G is either 32 feet per second squared if you're in feet in the standard system, or metric 9.8 meters per second squared. And in this problem, uh, we are given, look at this, we're given the initial velocity. So V0 is equal to 48 feet per second squared in this problem. Um, and guess what? It's a, it starts on a cliff 160 feet high. So guess what that stands for? Initial height. What variable is that? A sub 0. So this is A sub 0 here. So A sub 0 equals 160. And what you need to do when you read these problems is understand what each represents so you can write your function. You have to write a function first in order to work with it. So that's part A. We're going to write our position function. That's S of t. Okay, S of t is equal for us negative 1 half times, what's g for this problem? 32 times t squared plus v sub 0, which we know to be 48 uh, times t and plus the initial height and it starts uh, on a cliff 160 feet high. So here's a little diagram here. You've got a cliff, ground, okay, cliff here, and it's 160 feet high. And so the object is starting right here. No, 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 no. It's going down. Okay, that's a very simple diagram. And when you draw your diagrams, make them super simple, yeah. Okay, I have to draw it up and out a little bit, but technically it's going straight up and straight down. Because if it's going up and out, that's a harder problem. So I've got to simplify it. It's basically going straight up, and then going to come straight down. Good question. But I have to draw like this, otherwise you won't be able to see it. Okay? Okay. Uh, the first problem is this. Find the max height of the ball. This is right up here. Max height. 
Okay, so you got to visualize this thing. It's going up, and when it reaches max height, it stops instantaneously and then comes back down. So visualize this. It's going up. It's slowing down due to gravity. It reaches the max height. What's the velocity at the top? Ooh, that's how you can solve the problem, by the way. And then it comes back down. So at max height, V is zero, isn't it? Let's write that down. So V, uh, v equals zero at the max height. Velocity equals zero at max height. So guess what we need to do to our position function in order to solve for the max height? Yeah, we need to differentiate. We need to find the time it takes to get up there, and then we can figure out its height. We've got to figure out how many seconds does it take to get up to the very top. If we know that, if we know t, all you do is substitute t up there, and you get your position at the top. Okay, so here we go. We've got to find v. v is found by taking the derivative of s, okay, your position function. So v of t... Oh, by the way, we should simplify this position function. What's negative 1 half times 32? Negative 16. So negative 16t squared plus 48t plus 160. We should simplify that before we differentiate. So v of t is equal to, let me see, negative 16 <coughs> times 2 is negative 32 times t plus what? 48. And what's the derivative of 160? Zero. Okay. Now, you can't solve for max height directly. You've got to find the time it takes to get up there, and then once you know the time, after how many seconds, then you can substitute it in your position function to figure out your height. In this case, your position function is actually a height function. Who sees that? It's not a left or right function. It's an up or down function, right? So it's actually a height function here. Because we're talking about vertical motion here. Okay, so we set this equal to zero because it isn't... When it reaches the very top, it instantaneously stops, right? Because it's got to come back down. So V of 0 equals, excuse me, at max height, at the very top, right up there, V equals 0. So we set that equal 0, we solve for T. Start working on that. We need, a, we need to know the time it takes to get up to the top. Either fraction or decimal. What's T? Three halves. three halves, which is one and a half, right? So 1.5 seconds or three and a half. So it takes one and a half seconds to get to the top. So right here, this takes 1.5 seconds to get up to the very top. Okay? Now we know the time. So if we know how much time it takes to get to the top, don't we just evaluate your height function, your position function at one at 1.5? Okay, so let's solve it. So S of 1.5, or you can say 3 halves right here, is equal to something. So uh, we probably should use 3 halves, unless you want to use your calculator. If you want to speed up your work, go ahead and take it out. So negative 16 times 1.5 squared, go ahead and take it out, guys, and use it, plus 48 times 1.5 plus 160. Do all that on your calculator and give me a number. I don't care whether you do it by hand or uh, by calculator. So here we go. So after you use your calculator, you got 196. This position, so what are the units? Feet. So how high above the cliff did it go? It started at 160, it went to 196, so how high? 36 feet higher. Okay, so this is max height. Let's label that. So what must what goes up must come down unless it has unless you go over terminal velocity and you go you blast out of the atmosphere. Uh, but if you're staying within the atmosphere, it's got to come back down. So my next question is find um, when the ball hits the ground. When I say when, that's at t equals what? Question mark. So what time does it hit the ground? Okay. So now look at this. Look at my little diagram here. It goes na 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 up and then down right here. When it hits the ground, you know, it obviously takes some time, right? What's the velocity? Well, actually, we can... What's the position when it hits the ground? What's the height above the ground when it hits the ground? 
So ground level, S of T equals zero. That's a clue how to solve the problem. And that's how you do solve the problem. All you do is you, well, actually, there's another way to solve the problem. Um, what's the velocity when it hits the ground? Oh, wait, oh, wait, that's another question. Hang on. We better just do it this way. Okay, so when it hits the ground, the height above the ground is zero, right? So take a look at your position function up there in black. On the first step there, we're going to set that equal to zero, and we're going to find the total time it takes to go up and down. Okay? And then, well, and then we answer the question. So here we go. So uh, zero equals negative 16 t squared plus 48t, plus 160. We want to find the time when it hits the ground, because it does go up and then back down. Right? So, what would we do to simplify this big time? You could divide out a, well, you could factor out or distribute out a negative 16. You could divide everything through by 16, or it's negative 16. That would really help out. Let's just divide everything by 16. That's a lot easier. I meant negative 16. So you get 0 is equal to t squared minus 3t minus 10. Whoa! Now that is easier. Yeah. Everybody say factor. Are you working ahead of me? Everybody's going, no, I'm just, I'm just being robotic here. I'm just writing as you speak, Ainsworth. Come on, you guys are my calculus group. This is this is my period four from Great Oak High School. They're famous now. Well, now you are. You got a factor. Maggie just said t minus five times t plus two. Yeah. Who agrees with Maggie? All right. All right. That was good. That means you got it right. So t equals what? Five and what? Okay, negative two doesn't sound like it could be it, but after five seconds, it hits the ground. So, ground hits ground at t equals five. Okay, now so it goes up. It takes one and a half seconds to go up, and three and a half more seconds to go back down. Okay. Now my next question is find the velocity when it hits the ground. So, I mean it's going faster and faster and faster until it hits the ground. So v. <coughs> V of t equals, you know, what? You know, what's that terminal velocity when it hits the ground? Okay, now what's our velocity function, V of t? Okay. Well, let me see. That gives you the velocity at any time, right? And we just, know, we just found out that after five seconds it hits the ground. So if you want the velocity at, at impact, impact velocity, which is what this is, you just plug in five, don't you? Okay, so a negative 30, or V of 5, this would be negative 32 times 5, plus 48 more. Okay, and what did you guys get? Okay, no, uh -huh. what was that, Jeremy? Feet per second. Now, why is it negative? All right, let's write that down, very good. Okay, so you're going to have fun in your, in your velocity project here, solving all kinds of these problems here. And this is just one of many examples how you can use your functions, okay? All right, we have time to do one more. Okay, this is a different type of motion, vertical motion problem. We have a rock here that's being dropped from the top of a building. So the rock is uh, right here. Okay, there's the rock, and it's being dropped, and it goes straight down. How high does it start off at? Okay, so it's 150 feet high. It says right there. Question is, first question, how long will it take the rock to hit the ground? That means that T equals, you know, whatever. How long? Time. How long does it take? How many seconds does it take to reach the ground? Okay, well, first of all, don't, you, you, need a, uh, you need a function, right? 
Okay, so let's go back to the previous page. We said the, the position function for any vertical motion problem was negative 16 times t squared plus uh, v sub 0 t plus h sub 0. There's your position function. You have to memorize this, by the way. This is vertical motion problems for vertical motion. It's a fa very famous physics equation, okay? It has to be memorized. Okay, now what's V sub zero uh, at the very top right here? What's your initial velocity? I mean, think about it. There's no guessing. You're, holding, you're on top of the and you're holding this. You're 150 feet high. You're holding it. What's the velocity? Initial velocity? Zero, zero right? G? No, I already put that in. G was negative, uh, or it's 32, so put that in. I, one negative one half times 32 is negative 16. I'm just going to... I want you to memorize this negative 16. Unless I switch the metric, then you're going to have to take a negative or a half a 9.8. But you won't do that, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so V sub 0 is 0. You guys got that part right. It starts off with initial 0 velocity. So it's negative 16 T squared plus 0 T plus what? How high is it? Plus 150. So let's rewrite that. Negative 16 T squared plus 150. There's your position function. That's how you start the problem. Okay, now let's, when it hits the ground, what's the height? We just talked about this. Okay, so at the ground level, S of t equals zero. So can't we just set this equal to zero and figure out how many seconds it takes? Just like we did last problem, right? Okay, go ahead and set that equal to zero. Solve for t. 16t squared equals 150. Divide by 16. What's t squared? What is, what is 150 divided by 16? 9.375. Well, you know what? Forget that. <laughs> Square root. Do this on the calculator. Okay, so let me get my calculator too. Hang on. So the square root of 150 divided by 16, who's getting that right there? 3.1 basically. Okay, so 3.1 seconds when it hits the ground. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me on that. Okay. Second question, what's the speed at impact? How do you find speed? Okay, absolute value of velocity. So speed is equal to absolute value of velocity. Oh my goodness, we need a velocity function. So what do you do with our position function here in yellow, right there, to get to the velocity function? Differentiate. So V equals S prime. So here we go. So we got S prime equals V, the velocity function, and that's going to be negative 32T. Wow. Just negative 32T, right? <coughs> this tough stuff. Okay, and we want, we want to find the velocity at, at 3.1 seconds, so don't we just substitute that in there? So V of 3.1 is negative 32 times 3.1. What is that? So how about 97 point, well, if you run it to the nearest tenth, what is it? About 98. So negative 98 uh, feet per second at impact. Oh, did, I, did I not do it correctly here? So should we use the rounded answer in our final calculation or the, the answer here that contains about 30 digits? Remember I told you the calculator is capable of holding 30 digits. So should we round it and use 3.1 or should we use all 30 digits? We use all 30 digits, so I, I carry the answer. Don't use 3.1, use all 30 digits. You get a more accurate answer. And so you get about negative 98.
Okay, so what's happening here is that it takes about 3.1 seconds to go to go down and hit the ground. So if it hits ground, Ryan Lovell right here, um, after approximately uh, 3.1 seconds. But the question is, what's the speed? And we know the speed is the absolute value of your velocity. Okay, so we take the absolute value of negative 98, and that's equal to 98. Okay, so my speed is 98 feet per second, so uh, after 3.1 seconds, roughly. Okay, all right, let's try the last one here together. Um, here we have a ball thrown upward, vertically, oh, excuse me, downward, thrown vertically downward from the top of the building with initial velocity of negative 15 feet per second. So this right here is V0, and that's negative 15, negative because it's going down, 15 feet per second. So it doesn't, it's not dropped, you know, because it's, in, like in the last situation, it's actually thrown downward at an initial velocity of negative 15. It's from the top of the building, so that's A sub 0 there is 320, okay, feet. So what I want to do is I'm going to start off with my position function here. I've got negative 16 T squared, because we're in, we're in feet and seconds here, um, plus V sub 0, which is negative 15, so I should write a minus sign. So minus 15t plus the height above the ground, so 320. Here's my position function right here. Okay, I want to find the velocity after four seconds. So again, here's the situation. We got ground here, and you know it's it's on top of a building right here, and the particle starts here and goes straight down, and it starts off at negative 15 feet per second. So there's the particle, the object, and it's going down. What's the velocity after four seconds? So like right about here, you know, right about here, what's V after four seconds? V equals question mark um, at T equals four. You know, what would that be? Uh, let's figure that out. We need a velocity function. So V of T is negative 32 uh, T minus 15. So I want to evaluate that at four. So V of 4 is equal to negative 32 times 4 minus 15. So we have negative, uh, let's see here, negative 32 times 4 minus 15, we get a total of negative 143. So negative 143 feet per second after 4 seconds. Okay, and the second problem in part A, or in part B, excuse me, uh, we want to find the velocity after falling 90 feet. So right here, uh, S of T equals uh, well, we got to figure out what S of T is. So after falling 90 feet, after, well, it starts off at 320, it falls 90 feet, mm, we got to subtract 90 from 320 and get, oh, how about 2, 230. Okay, so position um, at that point, we're roughly 90 feet down here, 90 feet, is roughly 230 feet. So 90, or excuse me, 320 minus 90 is 230. So there's my position after falling 90 feet. So the question is, what's the velocity at that time? Well, I don't know how long it takes to get down there, so I need to find T. So find T, the time it takes, um, after falling or at a position uh, at S of T equals 230. So I think this is uh, just one of a couple ways you can solve it. So here we go. We've got 230, excuse me, my position function is um, Okay, so back to the problem here. We start off at, uh, at an initial height of 320 feet. So right here is 320 feet. Um, we want to find the velocity after falling 90 feet. So 320 minus 90 is 230. So uh, right here at this point, let's say it's 230 feet. Okay, that's your position 
after a certain amount of time. That's your S of T. That's your position. Remember, S of T stands for position function at any time. So at T equals 0, at T equals 0, S of T equals 320. But after a few a second or two, I don't know how long, um, it's at 230 feet after draw, dropping 90 feet. The question is, what's the velocity at that time? So I'm going to set up a position function to help me find out the time it takes to reach that point and then substitute that value of time into the velocity function. So uh, I know that I'm at 230 feet. That's going to be equal to my position function, negative 16t squared minus 15t plus 320, which is your initial height of the object. Okay, and I'm going to solve for t. I'm going to find t, the time it takes to drop 90 feet. So find t uh, time um, it takes dropping the 90, or the time after dropping 90 feet, time after dropping 90 feet. Okay, so let's do that. Let's subtract and let's set this uh, equal to zero. So I got zero is equal to 320 minus 230. So minus 230 here, minus 230 here. I get zero is equal to negative 16t squared minus 15t uh, equals or plus 90 here. So at this point, we want to divide by. Uh, 16, uh, or, you know, we'll just call this A and this B and this C and use the quadratic formula. We could do that, too. And let's solve for T. So T is equal to 15, opposite of B, plus or minus the square root, 15 squared minus 4 times A, which is negative 16, times C, all divided by 2 times A, which is negative 16. So let's get our calculators out and go for it here. Uh, we're going to take, do the positive uh, case first, or, you know, plus. So 15 plus the square root, all right, a 15 squared plus, because there's a double negative right there, uh, plus 4 times 16 times 90. Okay, and let's get an answer. Let's divide that by negative 32. So divided by negative 32, I get negative um, negative 2.88. That's time, so you know that doesn't make much sense. So negative 2.88, negative 2. I'll write it down, but it just doesn't make much sense. Or the other possible value. So let's go 15 minus the square root of 15 squared plus 4 times 16 times 90. Okay, divided by negative 32. I get about 1.95. So 1.95. So this one doesn't make sense. This one does. So after 1.95 seconds, you know, it reaches, it's dropped 90, 90 feet. So I wanted the velocity. So V of 1.95 is equal to, and there's my velocity function, negative 32t minus 15. So negative 32 times 1.95 minus, right there, 15. Okay, so here we go. Um, I already got my time in there, so I multiply it by negative 32 times uh, negative 32, and then minus 15 more. We get about negative 77. So negative 77.4 feet per second, okay, after dropping 90 feet. Okay, so there's a couple, of, you know, a few examples that you could use to help you with your velocity position project. All right, and it's a video, so you can go ahead and uh, rewind and replay this all you want. So give your homework a shot, come prepared with questions, and I'll see you tomorrow.